Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mel and welcome to the start of a new reading vlog. I've got a couple of books that since probably the latter half of the year I have been desperate to read but I just haven't found a real reason to pick them up yet and I don't want to end this year without trying these books. And then there is one book that has just recently come on my radar that I'm just going to pick up for fun. But basically this vlog is going to be dedicated to reading the books that I didn't get to in the rest of the year. We're gonna see how many I can get to, but I do have three on this vlog TBR that I wanted to quickly chat with you guys about. Okay, so welcome to my floor. Alia is hanging out up there, taking up all of the space on the couch. So the first book that I do want to get read for this vlog is gonna be Grieber's Blood. This is the sequel to The Combat Codes by Alexander Darwin. And I really, really, really enjoyed Combat Codes. This just came out at the beginning of December. I have had an arc of it for a little while, but wanted to wait till a little closer to time. So I think that this one is going to be perfect. That is a high fantasy slash sci-fi book. So we've got something there. Uh, the one that has just come on my radar that I really want to read is Powerless by Lauren Roberts. This is a young adult fantasy romance that I have heard a lot about recently. Cassidy's really loving it and didn't want anybody to read it. So of course I'm going to. This one is like Hunger Games meets Red Queen. And I've heard it's got some really, really good banter. And then the last one is going to be one on my Kindle Crown of Oaths and Curses by Jay Bree. There is actually a special edition of this going on sale on the 20th of December. So I'm really hoping that I can at least get a good chunk of this read and decide if I am going to like it enough to get the special edition of it. This is author, also an author that is going to be at a polycon. I have already read the first two novellas that go with this book. So I am ready to go. It's quite chunky. It's about 700 pages long, despite being on my Kindle and not looking that way, but I'm really excited to give this one a go. Okay guys, so those are the three books that I'm hoping to read during this vlog. We have got a lot to do, so let's hop to it. It is a new day and I have seen better. We're going to ignore this, but I'm not feeling the best. I'm feeling a little bit under the weather, but that's okay because I am reading a fantasy romance, The Crown of Oaths and Curses by Jay Bree. You guys have seen me read The Sword and the Scepter, which are the two prequel novellas to this and really, really enjoy them. thought the world was really interesting. I was really curious about the characters and I'm very intrigued by the fact that this is a true enemies to lovers hate to love. Like these two opposite sides of the spectrum. There is a war going on between the witches and the Unseelie, and the Unseelie blamed the witches for the blight on their land, the curse on their children. But the fates have decided that one of the most powerful witches and the Unseelie prince are mates. So they are destined to be fated mates, but fated mates does not always equal happy and in love like it does in a lot of stories. And I'm loving that twist on things. It did take me a little while with the writing because it was initially very, very repetitive. We'd have the same sentence on like three different pages in a row, but I think that it settled in a lot. I'm really enjoying it now. I'm having a good time. I don't really know what it is about it, but I'm engaged. I want to continue reading. I don't think that there's a lot of romance in this first one, if I remember correctly, because they decide despise each other, but it's 683 pages. So I'm really hoping that we do come to something, even if it's just tension filled hate sex. I'm good with that. I am good with that. But right now I really buy the fact that they can't stand each other. You can tell that they like feel that they're supposed to have, they have this connection, but neither one of them really wants to acknowledge it. And I'm having a good time so far. I don't think I told you that I was like 13, 14%. So not super far, but enjoying the vibes at the current moment. And I'm excited to continue. So I'm about to start Powerless by Lauren Roberts. So this is a book that Cassidy has been raving, ranting, and loving recently, but she wants no one to read it. She said that it's not good, but she loves it anyway. And so she's absolutely terrified for me to read it. So what am I going to do? I'm going to read it. Of course. So <laughs> this is what I'm going to be starting tonight. I'm really excited about it actually, because I do think it's going to be a lot of fun. This is apparently Red Queen meets the Hunger Games. It's following Peyton, who is an ordinary and she left her home when she was really young and she's currently living on the streets. And then we also have Kai, who is the son of a king. And he is also an enforcer, which basically means that it's his job to go out and kill the ordinaries. I believe this is a world where there was a plague and the plague gave, gave people special abilities, but also then there was a purging that got rid of all of the people that didn't have special abilities, something of that nature. I'm not really sure, but I'm gonna find out. It sounds like a lot of fun. This is a young adult fantasy romance, and I've heard that the banter is bantering in this, and I'm just really in the mood for a good banter, so I'm here for this. I'm about to start this. I'm so excited. Let's go!
Okay, so I am currently 50 pages into Powerless, and I wanted to give you guys my initial thoughts because, like, I'm not hating my time. I know Cassidy was so scared for me to read this, but, like, honestly, you guys, I'm having fun. I was expecting the writing to be terrible, but it's not. It's strangely addictive. I will say that there are some times where I feel like we jump from scene to scene and I don't really get a lot of transition. And I'm like, wait a second, what is going on? How did we get from point A to point B? There are a couple of things where I feel like I don't fully understand what the elite are, what the ordinaries are, what the, um, what did they call them? They're not psychics, but mundanes are like I want a little bit more explanation into that and I want a little bit more about what the purging and the plague were because I just feel like I have a rudimentary understanding but do want to know a little bit more I'm pretty sure that Cassie said that's not going to happen though so I'm trying to just like let that go and enjoy the time and not need like a super big explanation for everything because I went into this book knowing that was the mindset that I needed to have was not like super epic fantasy lenses. I needed to pull my, my epic fantasy lenses off, lay down those glasses and pick up my enjoy my time glasses, which I feel like I am fully prepared to do. So I'm going to go back, read this. I'm buddy reading this with Lexi and Monica and Lexi's Patreon. So I am supposed to get to page 100 today, which I think is through chapter 12. And so I need to get about 50 more pages into it. I'm excited to continue. Who am I? So David has decided that we are going to be making cookies for Santa. He's not helping me though. He's making me do it all by myself while he stands over there and plays on his phone instead of actually helping me with the cookies. Talking trash about football right now. I don't understand the art of softening butter in a microwave, honestly. It's not supposed to be melted. It's supposed to be softened, but we're slightly melted when you're baking. You're supposed to listen to the instructions, but you know, well, here we are. You know, you really need to talk up so the video can Yes, I made a mistake. <laughs> okay, we are at 350 and we have 10 to 12 minutes, which means we have eight minutes. Okay, we had cookie baking with David. Now we have cookie decorating with David. Okay, are you decorating or am I decorating? You, you do that, I'll do sprinkles. You're going to do sprinkles? Yeah. That's I'm just, cheating. I'm a, I'm a sprinkle person. My brother's nickname for me is sprinkles. So. <laughs> See, I told you that was good. I'm poor God. We don't do the icing very well in this house. We're gonna ignore that, okay? And we're gonna pretend that these are the prettiest cookies you've ever seen. It does not matter. They're gonna taste good either way. Yes. Okay. Go go for it, Mr. Sprinkles. And then you gotta then you gotta do it like Emerald Lagasse, that chef. Bam! Seriously? <laughs> Bam! Bam! Okay, stop. Hey, chefs do it. <laughs> Bam! Okay, listen, Bam. you are throwing sprinkles everywhere. They deserve a few. Every Oh, she's a weirdo. They look much better with the sprinkles on them. I agree. I appreciate you um being nice about my icing job. I do. How many sprinkles are you going to use? Uh, well, we only use like half of them at this point. So. I don't think we need that many more sprinkles. We're going to have a festive plate. This is like holiday party ready right here. <laughs> no, 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 no. We are taking these nowhere. <laughs> Let me show you the cookie final product. These are our glorious, apparently holiday party ready cookies. Aren't they fantastic? They're going to taste good, so that's all that really matters. All right, you ready? The BAM remix. Cheers, cheers to the cookies. Okay. Mm. Pretty good. Only half my face is in here. There you go. Get better. What are you doing? Hiding. Hiding? Mm -hmm. You're front and center. <laughs> I can still see you. <laughs> <laughs> cookies are good. We're going to go eat these now. I do not have a reading update, but what I do have is a package. I have no idea what this is. I've ordered um, a couple of things from the Broken Binding recently. I think just two, three. I'm not really sure, but this is one of those things. I think I know what this one is because I think I remember which one shipped first, but I'm very curious to see this in person. I really liked it when they first showed it. And then after that, I was a little bit concerned. Some of the mock-ups and stuff that we were getting. How do I open this? Ah, it is what I thought it was. So I love how these are packaged. It's always so, like, so nice, honestly. But let us undo and see what this looks like. I hate to mess up the wrapping, but we're just gonna, we're gonna have to do it. 
I'm slightly undecided, but this is their copy of The Will of the Many by James Eilington. This is one that I ordered before I think I had read The Will of the Many. I just went ahead and ordered it and obviously loved The Will of the Many. I thought that it was so, 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 so good. And so I was very excited that I was able to get my hands on this one, but I'm not 100% sure about the watercolor illustrated cover. I like it. I like it a lot. I just really don't love it with the edges, I think is my problem. The cover by itself is gorgeous. It's got like the super matte feel, but I don't know that I love it with that edge. But there is an option that they gave a red reverse color dust jacket. And my copy of The Will of the Many for the US edition is blue. So I may switch it over. I haven't really decided because I do really like this matte feel. I don't know, I'll, I'll let you know. But it's also got beautiful foiling on the hardcover. It's got gorgeous end papers. And this one is number 843 out of 500. I'm very excited to have this. It, like I said, it's one of my favorite books of the year, hands down. That's all, that's all I've got for you guys. I don't have, like I said, any reading updates. I just had um, book mail updates. I have not updated you guys in like three or four days. As you can probably tell, I have since gotten snotty since the last time I talked to you guys and have slacked on my updating and reading in general. I did call out of work yesterday just to kind of give myself some time to read and relax, which turned into me binging a whole season of The Vampire Diaries, so. But I really quickly, before my camera battery died, wanted to give you guys an update on Powerless. I'm about to head out the door to take Ollie to the groomer, and then we're gonna get some coffee and get some listening time in. I don't have a whole, whole lot more to say about this. It's a lot of fun. The banter does sometimes feel just a little bit forced, a little bit performative, but for the most part, I'm just enjoying my time. I'm having fun listening to it and reading this and hearing about the trials and seeing their relationship form. I just think it's a lot of fun. It's a type of book that you need to go into with the expectations of it being a good time and just enjoy your time with it. Don't put too much pressure on it. And so far I'm doing that and having a lot of fun. So I am going to go walk this dog before he loses his mind, take him to the groomer and get him a fresh new Christmas do. Okay, um, I'm gonna do a chocolate chip and nutcracker is uh, medium. Thank you. finally halfway into Crown of Oaths and Curses, which means I can finally give you guys another update on this. I've been reading this as just kind of my sit down, relax when I have time book. And so I don't have an audiobook for it. I don't think that an audiobook exists for it. So it's just been kind of slow going. I'm liking this, but I'm also struggling with it a little all at the same time. For the most part, I like the world. I think that the politics are really, really interesting. The writing style is good and she is truly making me believe this enemies that we have going on here. Soren hates the witches and Rook is just here to do a job, but thinks that they're all just a little bit of idiots, which honestly, she's right. Man, they are frustrating those high fae. We're halfway and it just feels like the plot is really dragging. I don't feel like a lot is going on. And when I say halfway, I mean I'm 300 pages into this book because it is nearly 700 pages long. And I just feel like nothing is really happening and I'm struggling with the pacing. I need more to be going on than just him saying, you're terrible, witch. I don't believe anything you say. Riding out into a village, seeing how bad things are, coming back, repeat process. It's just a little bit it's just dragging for me right now. Our two main characters have really had no conversations. They've only been around each other a handful of times. And typically it's only for a page here or a page there. It's not really like scenes where they are truly together. And I went into this expecting no romance because I knew that this was a trilogy that really wanted to hammer home the enemies to lovers. And I'm here for that and I'm good with it. But I just wish that they had more interactions because we're not getting any banter that we usually get with enemies to lovers. We're not getting that interaction for me to truly buy anything that either one of them is saying about one another. So it just feels like we have two very separate stories going on right now. And while neither of those are bad, I want it to be their story and their progression of events. 
So I'm hoping that that starts to change a little bit into the second half. I think that this book is going to suffer just a little bit from being a self-published KU book. The more pages, the better. It's going to be way too long and that's going to hurt it for me personally. But at the same time, I can respect what Jay Bree is trying to do here. So we're going to see right now. It just feels pretty good, but I am really having a hard time with some of those aspects of the story. So I'm going to keep reading. I don't know when I'm going to finish this. This will probably be my like book that I read throughout the vlog because without an audiobook, I can only read it when I have dedicated sit down time. And I know you can tell by my voice that I am sick. So my concentration level has not been what I want it to be. I generally feel okay. Uh, I think it's just a cold. So it's gotten my voice more than anything else, but it's just a little bit of my concentration struggling in between the coughing. So that's why it is taking me a little longer to read this. And that could be part of the reason that it feels like it's dragging a little bit. It's because I'm dragging reading it. Okay, so I've decided to switch back to Powerless for the night because I am so behind on our buddy read. It's not even funny, but you guys, I, I told you that the banter occasionally felt forced, but sometimes the banter is bantering. And so we're in this scene and he is trying to distract her from beating him at archery. So he decides that he is going to basically get all up in her personal space and she misses and he says, I wasn't going to say a thing. Liar, I can practically feel you smirking. My lips are against her ear and I'm in fact smirking. I can't help it when I'm right. Okay, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Dang it, when did this book get so cute? I could get used to you being a gentleman, Azer. And I could get used to being one for you, Gray. Oh, I wasn't expecting it to be like cute. The banter, but that's not banter, that's adorable. All right, friends, so we are not gonna let the sick get us down. I have several things that I need to do today. The first of which is read some books because as you guys know, I'm in the middle of two books right now and I need to start a third. I gave you guys my TBR for the beginning of this vlog and I have yet to start Griever's Blood. I'm gonna be doing a buddy read with some of my patrons and they started yesterday and I haven't even touched it and I'm the one that sectioned out the book. So today my goals are to finish Powerless and to start Griever's Blood as far as reading. Then I also really need to finish up my Christmas shopping. I don't have much left to do, but I need to get like some cards and wrapping paper and stuff like that. Don't worry, I have tested negative for COVID, so at this point it's just powering through and trying to get everything done despite sounding like Kermit the Frog. But you know what? I've got, I am equipped with Dayquil and no spray and I feel like I can get the day done. So I've just gotten home from my grandmother's Christmas. She always does hers the third Sunday right before Christmas, which is really nice because then we don't have to like compete with anybody else's Christmas. I'm still a little bit snotty, but I do feel a lot better today. I still sound a little froggish, but overall I do feel a little bit better today. I'm not back to hundred percent, that's for sure, but I feel better. Not great, but better. But on the way to my grandmother's house, I was able to finish Powerless by Lauren Roberts, and I had a great time with this one. And Cassidy kind of set my expectations up to really not like this book, but all in all, I thought it was a lot of fun, and I actually felt like it was a very compelling story. It's definitely not anything unique, nothing I've ever read before. I definitely see the Hunger Games and the Red Queen vibes. Like I said, both of those are meshed pretty heavily into this book, but I like both of those series, and so I had a great time with this. I think that the banter was good. By the end of the story, I really cared about our characters and what was going to happen to them. I do think I wish that the side characters had had a little bit more screen time because there were especially like Kit and A, I felt like I really wanted to get to know them just a little bit better. But overall, I really had fun with this and I think I'm going to give it a four star. Look at me go. Like I had a lot of fun with this. They, The, the relationship hooked me and at the end, I knew it was coming. I knew it was going to happen, but still like I am so excited to see how this is going to shake out in Reckless because like we got to come back from that. Are we going to be able to come back from that? I don't know. We'll see, but I'm excited to find out. So I'm finished with this. I am about two and a half days behind on my buddy read of Griever's Blood. I was supposed to be starting this with the Patreons Friday and today is Sunday night. It's like 530 and I haven't started this yet. So I do think that I'm gonna join Cassidy for sprints tonight. I need, I don't even remember where I need to be, honestly, probably like halfway. So I'm just gonna be behind on the buddy read, but this is the sequel to The Combat Codes, which you know that I read during Battle-a-thon and really enjoyed. I ended up giving it a four star. And this one just came out, I think at the beginning of December. So I'm excited to jump back into this world. It is a sci fantasy world where we have basically martial arts that people fight in a ring to settle their battles instead of them like going to 
into war. And I really liked the ending and the cliffhanger that Combat Codes left off on. So, so I'm ready to pick this one up. I've been highly anticipating it since I finished it. The only problem is I think that the third book in the series doesn't come out until like late 2024 which hurts my soul a little bit because when I finish this, I know I'm gonna wanna pick up the third and final book. And these were self-published prior to Orbit picking them up, but now that Orbit has them, you can't get the self-published self copies anymore. So there's no way for me to like sneak my way into getting this. That's my plans for the evening is to read some more of Grievous Blood. I don't have any updates for you guys on Crown of Oaths and Curses. I haven't read any more of that since I talked to you last. I'm still about halfway. Like I said, that's kind of my like sit down when I had time right before bed book so I don't expect to finish this before the end of the vlog but when I do have more to talk to you guys about I will let you know so anyway it's 5 30 sprints are starting in like half an hour I'm gonna go set up and snuggle in to read Gruber's Blood well, I about got blown away coming to get in my car. Today was a big sad day because I had to go back to work today after being out from all of the snotty. But on the plus side, I was able to get a decent amount of Grievous Blood read. I think I'm up to about chapter 13, 40-ish percent of the way through it. So I've made a really good dent over the last day because I think I just checked in with you guys yesterday, maybe? I don't remember. I'm still horrifically behind on the buddy read, but that's okay because I'm making progress. It, let me tell you a little bit about what Combat Codes is about really quickly. It is following Sego, who is a young child that has been brought down to as part of this like fighting ring. And we have Murray, who is part of the like, what are they called? Like the knights that do the combat codes. Essentially, they're not knights, but I forget exactly what they're called. And he finds Sego and decides to bring him in and train him to enter into the Lyceum, which is like the school um, for the Grievers. Grievers is what they're called. Why was that so hard for me, considering it's literally called Grievers Blood? I'm still sick. That's my excuse. <laughs> But that's kind of the first novel is introducing you to what the Grievars are, what the combat codes are, why they do what they do. And then there's a lot of buildup that happens in the second half to kind of climax and end up where we are now. With that being said, I did expect for the climax of the second book to have more impact on the first half of this book. And I think that that's where I'm struggling just a little bit is because I expected this one to kind of start off with a bang. The momentum, like the first book, my biggest complaint was I had a lot of issues connecting in the first half and then in the second half I was really enjoying it and I was thinking okay well this one that won't be a problem because of where it left off but unfortunately it's still been a bit of an issue. We've mostly following Sego as he is in the Lyceum and learning and kind of going through the school motions which I actually really like. I like learning about the different magics and the different um, science fiction mechanisms and things like that and the more like class side of things and then also a little bit of the repercussions from what we learned at the end of combat codes then we have murray kind of doing something off to the side i don't really want to tell you guys too much about that and then we have soul who is kind of off on her own in a different part of the world and unfortunately it just feels like a lot of setup like middle book syndrome at the current moment i have heard that the second half picks up a lot though so i'm excited to continue reading and see how it does pick up i think right now for me Sego's point of view is definitely by far my favorite. I have some questions. I like being in the school setting. I'm not a huge fan of Soul's point of view just because it feels so disconnected from the rest of the story. She's in an area with a different culture and while it is still like focused on kind of the griever side of things, there's something about it that just feels very disconnected from the rest of the story and I can't really put my finger on what it is but I'm not loving it. So I'm curious to see how that ends up kind of coming back together in the second half of the story. Hopefully they start to intertwine a little bit and it'll make more sense. That's my hope. So anyway, I feel like I have made a ton of progress today. We'll see how much more I can get read. Have not read any more of Crowns of Oaths and Curses. I am slacking on that one. And I've told you guys a thousand times already. It's just because I don't have the audiobook for it. So I'm going to listen some more of Grievous Blood. We're actually going to be going tonight to see Christmas lights. So it is currently the 18th of December and I have been a Grinch all year. I put up my Christmas tree super early and then aside from that I've barely listened to any Christmas music. I haven't watched any Christmas movies, haven't seen any Christmas lights. I've been a Grinch. So tonight we're going to go to one of the like baseball stadiums in their parking lot. They do like this big drive through Christmas lights. It's always a lot of fun. We tend to go as a family every year. I'm curious to see what their theme is. I will show you guys um, some b-roll of it while I'm chatting here but it's always a lot of fun. I think it's gonna be really great. So I'm gonna go. We're gonna go eat before that and I am starving. I can feel it in the air. It's getting colder but yet so warm. Before we know it, it's Christmas. 
Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve. This year I'm gonna give you something special. It doesn't cost a dime, but it's precious. Hope that I won't forget it. I am now finished with Griever's Blood by Alexandra Darwin and I ended up liking this book but I don't think that I liked it as much as I did Combat Codes. Whereas Combat Codes I didn't love the beginning or I, I wouldn't say I didn't love it. I liked the beginning. I really liked the ending. This one felt a little bit disjointed throughout the whole story to me. I think I need to sit on my rating. I think it's gonna be a three. I, it could be a four, but it feels like a three. So I'm going to sit on my rating with it for a little while before I fully commit to that three, but it's kind of where I'm at right now. There was not enough Seago and Murray in this book for one. We had a bunch of different points of views. Saul's point of view, I think I've already told you, did feel a little bit disjointed from the rest of the story. I did like her point of view and the fact that we got world building in it, but it almost felt like it was too little too late at that point. Like I really wanted to know a lot of that stuff in book one or at least earlier in book two. The world really expanded in her point of view. We got a lot more information on like the big bad and kind of the rebellion and things that are gonna be happening in the later books, but it just felt like it didn't really connect with Sigo's point of view. I mean, it did, but there was just something about it to me that felt like I was almost reading two different books. I don't really know what that was because there wasn't any like solid thing that was like, yes, this is what bugged me about that. But it did feel that way for a lot of the story, mostly in the beginning, less so in the end. And then we have a different point of view and I don't wanna tell you who that point of view is, but that one also just kind of felt like it was dumped on me and I wasn't necessarily confused. Like I knew who he was, I knew what his relation to everything was, but it felt like this just kind of added in thing to give you something a little extra, but it wasn't just this most necessary thing. And I know at the end, we're supposed to be oohed and awed by how everything is coming together. And I see it, but I also felt like I already knew all of that. So I don't think that it had as big of an impact on me because it didn't feel like this aha moment. It was like, yeah, I knew that already. Everything still felt disconnected. So I think that was my biggest problem with this book overall. Do I think that this has an incredible idea? Yes. Do I recommend it? Absolutely. This is a science fiction fantasy novel. We definitely got more of the fantasy in the second book. I think that the idea is so unique and so much fun. I'm still really excited to read the third book in the series and see how everything wraps up. I think that this just probably suffered from middle book syndrome where there were a lot of things that needed to happen in order to set up book three, but that probably should should have been sprinkled in a little bit more seamlessly throughout the end of the first book and this book. And it just felt a little bit of a filler to me overall, but I still enjoyed it. I still had a good time with it. So that's where I'm like, do I give it a three? Do I give it a four? Because I definitely had problems with it overall, but I had fun. I read this book in two days. So it's not something that I dreaded picking up. I was excited to continue reading this story. I loved being around Seago. I think that his character is a ton of fun. I liked the school setting aspect of this. I even liked Soul's point of view and what we learned in her point of view. I think that the biggest issue for me, like I said, was just the connection. Would still very much so recommend this series. I think that we're in a drought now till book three. I don't remember when it's coming out. I saw a release date somewhere and I cannot for the life of me figure out where I saw it, but I wanna say it was like end of 2024, very beginning of 2025. I think we have a year drought, which stinks because it's just the third and the final book that I'm missing. And it's already been written, but then Orbit took it. And when Orbit took it, the written version got taken away. That is another book down for this vlog, which means I really, 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 really need to be working on Crowns of Oaths and Curses tonight. That needs to be my number one priority to get this thing finished up. And that's gonna kind of wrap up several of the books that I really wanted to finish before the end of the year that weren't like SPFBO books. Cause that's really where I'm at now is there were a couple of like highly anticipated books that I needed to read and SPFBO. So we are finishing up my highly anticipated and so far pleased to say that they've all been wins. Today was my last day of work before Christmas, and despite it being relatively busy, I was able to get to 70% of The Crown of Oaths and Curses while I was at work today. And I am happy to report that I am liking the second half better than I was the first. Not that I wasn't liking this first half, but there just wasn't a lot of them moments in the first half. It was more of like world building, but not really world building. I don't know, but they just, there weren't enough moments of them together. And the second half, we are getting a lot more of that. A little bit of not 
banter, but snipes, which I appreciate. I think the first half of this book is definitely going to fall into the it's too long category. About half of that first chunk could have probably been cut out and the pacing would have just been a lot smoother. But when we hit the second part, there is a lot more going on. We are getting to see more of the world. We're getting some more backstory and I'm liking that quite a lot. There was one thing that happened right before the second part that I both really liked and didn't love all at the same time. I'm not really going to tell you what it is, but it is a pivotal turning moment in some of the characters' beliefs toward the witches, and I think that it was handled well for the most part. I do wish that Rook had struggled with it a little bit more than she did magically because it kind of felt like it was snap and done when it was this big thing that was like blanketing the land for millennia, and it was just over in a blink. So I wish that it had been a little bit more... I don't know, not like drawn out, but I don't know, a little bit more oomph to it or something. I think that part of my issue with Soren right now, I like Rook a lot, but part of my issue with Soren right now is that he has this deep, 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 deep set hatred of witches. And honestly, it's not just him. It's all of the like high fae. And despite being told and shown over and over and over again that Rook is not one of the witches that they hate, they just can't really seem to get on board. Which on the one hand, I appreciate because I don't really like it when books like set up this hatred and this fear and then blink one thing happens and they're suddenly over it. So I do like that. But at the same time, I think that his like deep seated hatred of the witches would be easier for me to understand and empathize with if I had seen it at any point. There are a couple of like battles, but they're very few and far between. We talk about how barren the land is and we are seeing that a little bit, but I just wish that we could see the source of this hatred a little bit more, like just a little bit. It doesn't have to be completely drawn out or anything like that, but I feel like there's something missing to make me truly believe why they hate the witches as much as they do or why they wouldn't be willing to see past that despite being shown time and time again that that's not the case in this scenario. I am having a lot of fun with it. I'm excited to continue reading and see how everything is going to wrap up because we have 30%. I know this book is a setup, like there's no romance in this first book, but I'm curious to see where she's going to leave it off and how we're going to set up a potential romance. I am going to hang out in bed and read some more of this and I'll check back in with you guys once I'm finished. I have literally just like as I turned the camera on finished the crown of oaths and curses and I think I'm gonna have to sit on my rating overnight because I have a decent amount of problems with this book. There are plenty of things that I feel like are a little bit left unanswered like how Rook is so much more powerful than everyone else. Like I get that she is the mother of the Ravenswood clan but I also don't feel like that is explained enough to explain how she has so much more power than everyone else. There were a couple of things that were a little bit too easily done for my liking. I did appreciate that they are truly enemies until shit hits the fan. And he doesn't really, like, he's not going to give her a moment's break until something really big happens. And I feel like that was good because it didn't feel like a cop out early in the beginning just to get them to lovers. We spent 700 pages of them hating each other, like literally until the last five pages and she still can't stand him. So this is definitely not a romance. If you're going into this expecting a romance and enemies to lovers, you will be disappointed. It's going to get there, I assume, but we are nowhere close as of right now. So I do like that part of it. But at the same time, there are issues that I had with it overall. I will say that it ends on a bang. I did like the last bit of it. I like the second half quite a bit. So I'm, I'm struggling between like my critiques of it and the fact that I enjoyed my time while reading it. So I think I need to sit on my rating overnight because I feel like this is going to be one of those books where I can go Yes, I enjoyed it, but I absolutely can see if someone has problems with it, but also I enjoyed it. So yeah, I'm going to sleep. I'm going to think and I will come to you guys in the morning. We will close out this vlog and I will give you my final rating. Good morning. I am showered. I am coffeed. And I think that I am awake enough to give you guys my final thoughts and wrap up this vlog. So last night we talked about A Crown of Oaths and Curses. I did finish this and I ended up, I think, really having a good time. Part of me says my critique brain on says this is probably a three star, my like super critical brain. But I think that I really want to next year make a promise to myself that I'm going to allow my critical brain to be on. I'm going to allow myself to be able to critically think about books and give my honest opinion 
while also allowing myself to recognize that books aren't perfect and it's okay and I'm still allowed to enjoy something that is not a perfect book. The critique part of my brain says this is a three, but the fact that I didn't want to stop reading in the second half. I literally read the entire second half, which is like 350 pages yesterday, all day, and would have easily just picked up the second book once I finished it to find out what happens next. So that tells me that I enjoyed it enough to at least give it a four star. And so I think that that's what I'm going to go with. I think that I am going to give this a lower four star and just allow myself to say that I enjoyed it. So that I think is my final thoughts on everything for this vlog. We had what, two four stars and a high three star. So I would say allowing myself to read things that I was highly anticipating is a win. You guys can probably hear the dryer, so I apologize for that. Don't really have a whole, whole lot more to tell you guys other than it is now the 22nd, so it is almost Christmas. I'm gonna take a little bit of time off, enjoy family. I hope you guys enjoy Christmas as well. Thank you guys so very much for watching. If you just wanna let me know that you were here and hanging out, leave me a tree emoji. Otherwise, let me know what some of the books are that you are desperately trying to finish before the end of the year. As always, links to my Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads are all linked down in the the description box below. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!